Hello everybody and welcome to the last match of Tentalica as we're down 500 TV down against Chaos and let's see what he's got. Oh, he doesn't have Claw Palm. Oh, he does. He's got Claw Mighty Blow, Jump Up. He doesn't have Claw Palm though. So it's not actually as bad as it could be, but it's still basically game-endingly bad, isn't it? Block, sure hands, movement, agility, tackle. Nah. There's no chances there. 500 TV down. Okay, at least he's got a bad record. But holy shit. 500 TV. And he's buying a babe as well. What a piece of shit. What an absolute piece of shit. Right. Wizard. Um, does he have rerolls? He's got three rerolls. So I could almost get the thing, but I need I need power, don't I? So I need the um I need Borak. I could almost get Morg, I could use all my money for Morg. Um no, I'll get a babe. Yeah, it's not his fault, obviously. It's but yeah, TV plus, yeah, TV plus. People who think of TV plus are, are shitters. But um, yeah, this guy is an asshole. Is he's just just unlucky. I just seem always unlucky with the matchmaking. All my last games have been four hundred TV down, which just makes it fucking hard, doesn't it? At least if there were five hundred TV like this, well, four fifty, I could get Borak and a and a wizard. But they've all been like four hundred TV down, so I haven't even got anything. Anyway, right, so I'm going to turn my mic off now, and, um, <laughs> yes, um, I'm going to turn off the second monitor and just concentrate on the game, because I am ill as fuck, um, so apologies for that, um, but yeah, tschüss.
oh Lord. I was uh, watching this intense game in silence, and I thought maybe I'll do some commentary as to not uh, not distract you. But okay. Don't say what. <laughs> Wait, one more time. Is bugger a swear word? <laughs> okay. We should we should, we should uh, go into a, a channel just in case any sneaky fellas start to yell and I can't get your attention. Bye bye, Velody. Come on, guys. I'm just here to listen to you. It's it's preemptive overloading. I see. I see. Trying to steam scam me. Hey, it's me, your brother. Okay. 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 Choose. All right, ladies and gents. Jim isn't showing his skills, so this will be somewhat hard. And then similarly, you can't see my mouse pointer, so that will also be hard. However, uh, down a shit ton of TV, caught up on the LOS. Uh, brief gander at the team, so a three-man bench for Jim, the one-man bench for the Chaos. Quick assessment of the teams. Has a weird tackle wrestle two heads. Uh, a blotch wrestle. Four strength guard on, on the LOS opposite Borak. Four strength mighty blow. So yeah, look, there's no doubt about it. There's a 500 TV uh, difference between these teams, and Borak will not be enough to stop that. Uh, turn three, sneak little chaos guy can really score at his leisure here, but uh, at turn three you don't really want to. In terms of removals, just these single KOs and nothing too scary. And Jim does have a movement uh, 7 strength 4 uh, festival that will, for the most part, catch any potato unless the ball carry does the handoff to the guy on the left hand side of the field. And I went to the leading hippie school of mediocrity. That's why I learned to state the obvious. Oh, also, it's New Year's Eve, so there may be fireworks in the background. Oh, and the, the pleasure of the fan. Oh man, is it going to be the Madman handoff? It could be. Uh, however, the stunned local warrior will apply to serving presence so the 4 plus catch, not really a thing. So good position for the Number three, Nova Warrior on the left hand side, and you stumble on the ground. Oh man, no thought. Immediate blitz in on the four strength. Did have the zombie block, so maybe could have maneuvered to three. But I guess he's just happy to get in the way. So the single, uh, single rotter roadblock. I guess then the four strength movement seven will dodge out to screen the ball carrier, or at least prevent a potato, or at least be in a position to react to it. So the dodge out after two double is likely the final action for Jim's turn. And his own blocks on the LOS. Look, there's not a lot of core and mighty blow across the board. Certainly not on Jim's team. 
He could even just look to disengage, uh, face corpses, and look to free men. So the lock on the guard fella for a push not following gets two people tied up on Borak. Arguably three once the dirty player hits the lodge for a push. Could even push him onto Borak too. Yeah, with an early scoring threat. Uh, does this year can really matter? He wasn't threatening the ball. Uh, all he did was, yeah, so he's just tying the uh, the screening beastman up so that the ball carrier is on his own. And with some great stuns this turn, uh, it'll just be the two heads is the only one that's make a safe action. Could even think about dodging the rotter into a double GFI to tag it, which would be madness, but it wasn't on the table. So movement seven guys free. Uh, Jim's one mighty blow claw block uh, free. I mean, this is that's another conversation in itself. Uh, in a league format where you need to win every game, and if the league wasn't a shitter league, so pretty much no leagues that I know of. And blah, blah. I don't know. Maybe if you're in like the I don't know Legion League Titan Division, which uh. It's the best one. Ross invited me to it. He's doing an invite-only version. But, uh, yeah, I assume every coach there will be decent. And so, in a league where that sort of stuff... Well, rephrase, in a league where your opponents are all going to be decent coaches, I think the Mighty Blow core piling on would be the build that I would go for. In that, against quality opponents with, you know, Chaos or Nurgle, you really do need the removals to really stand a chance. Uh, but against Shooters in Cole, I would value block a lot more in that Shooters in Cole, all you really need to do is make sure that blocks and not get banged on by dice to win matches if you're not doing silly stuff yourself. Which in itself is hard. I do silly stuff all the time. It makes me sad. Yeah, I think he did, but look, he's... he's made the right play in blitzing four positions. So yes, he could have made a two-dot block for free and blitzed elsewhere. 99% uh, of cold coaches would do that in that they say, oh, I'm going to make every block I can and then think about the ball. Where these guys made the conscious de decision to have men protecting the ball. So uh, good work for him. Uh, dodge double GFI for the Mighty Blow Core Beastman hits the ball carrier though. And look at it's turn four. You don't really want to use your wizard this early. I think because Jim has so many people free, just moving downfield to force the score. Oh, he is going for the bolt. So this bolt allows the sack on the carrier. Mr. Obvious. Um, yeah, look, I don't know, maybe Bolton the carry was, was the one. Oh, man. Yeah, look, as ballsy. He is somewhat outmanned. Marking the downed men will make reactions harder, however, one of the downed men is the tackle wrestle two heads. So two plus out. 2D blitz with three success, and then the Agi four movement seven just picks it up and scores. Uh, so that that's why I, I don't I didn't really like that wizard, unless he's fouling this two heads guy, or you know the the movement seven guy really getting in a good position. I guess it can. He can get right in front of it. Oh man, Jimmy doesn't have a bribe. Oh, was that a madman foul? If he's got no bribe and hasn't moved people before before doing that. Because at the moment in, in the board's current state. Uh yeah, it's just a two plus out for the 2D block. So 
get the guy off the ball. This strength four, movement seven guy that just moved should have moved before the foul, I think. And by I think, I mean definitely, definitely. It was wrong and he should feel bad. GFIs. Yeah, no, I, I was happy with, wait, well, we raised. I was happy with the position of him just leaving it in front of the two heads. The double GFI, yeah, does the same sort of thing in that it stops the ball pickup to some extent. You know, a bad scatter and the edge of four still then three plus, two pluses, two pluses to pick up the ball or to, to get out. Uh, I really liked the two heads standing. So then at least you, and you do have an option to score in four. Good Kaz, though, on the four strength mighty blow. Oh man, a big commitment to a Borak block. Oh, they're not using the two heads to blitz. Insanity. Well, I guess the ball carrier is fine. Actually, it's movement seven, so it's even more fine than the block for a push. Which is, I guess, why he wanted the. The four strength movement seven also marking the ball, so this pickup's harder. But even then, it was just a three plus pickup with short hands into the two plus out. So, yeah, look, it was tough regardless. I know, I just think that wizard turn maybe could have, could have, uh, could have saved the wizard and. Just blitzed in front. Like, there wasn't really a, a situation. Unless he armor broke the two heads with the bolt and then the ball carry with the hit. But playing for armor breaks, a bit crazy. Maybe single GFI from the four strength that failed the two GFIs throw a foul. But then he, no, if he didn't do the foul previously. And then fell the edgy four short hands ball carrier. That might have been enough to stop the drive. But then you're risking your uh, best pestigore without a bribe. So yeah, look, aside from that double GFI, which, you know, I understood why why he did it, in that he won the extra man on the ball. Which is, the extra GFIs are just such a high price to pay. Um, on, on your offense... Stopping Nurgle in four with no rerolls, I wouldn't be too scared. Jim does have a respectable amount of in five, six, six fellas with block. And yeah, any passing play naturally pretty scary, but he does have that movement seven best of all. So it's it's not unrealistic for Jim to score, but I'm sure he'd much rather have reroll in hand. But yeah, he just went a real hand with the ball early on and sort of almost forced himself to score. Stalled as best he could. Only has a mighty blow core jump up warrior. Uh, so it's not the most bashy chaos team I've ever seen, or the most. Uh, uh, what's the word? Kaz intensive? It's not the uh, claw bomb chaos at 1900. They might have suffered deaths. Might have had to die up in this ne next game. Who knows? Nobody knows. Uh, but he does have plenty of guard. So yeah, he, look, he won't lose a bash fight with most teams. The extra four strength, a bunch of lodge. And so it's that resilience that sort of makes up for the lack of claw bomb. But there's still no excuse not to have a claw bomber. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the full strength Mighty Blow has been Kaz, so presumably that's going to be built into the pop. And to be honest, I would turn down the so uh, maybe not. Oh man, no real LOS blocks, uh, all with block, but without having the ball really protected, two heads guy in range. It'll be a right nuisance. So I think the beastman that moved to screen on the right maybe should have uh, happened before the ball pickup. Ball pickup successful though. Three plus without a reroll, the corpse is right in the cage. Stunned with no punishment on the Blodge Beastman. So good enough defense, three turns left. Uh, with a movement of 14. Uh, you can do another turn of no movement and still be in range, so it's no it's no crazy rush. By not going too ham down a flank, uh, the other coach, uh, a Chaos coach, might not know what to do. Uh, might commit heavily to a bash, might just screen. But it poses the question. Look at this. It's a first action. Uh, blitz without moving anyone else. I mean, three rolls, not too scary. Uh, blitzing with Claw Mighty Blow would be absolutely the correct play. But I'd be moving people first. The guys in the backfield don't need to be that deep. Extra tackle zones, you know, behind the line. Discourage a blitz through. Looks like Chaos Coach will just be screening with only one man in base contact. Screening is an effective stalling strategy. Oh, hi, you doing, Pedro Jack? It's Jimmy here. Um, I'm just playing with my Nurgles. That's game number 14 of Tentalica. Hello. Yeah, so look, screen's going to be tough, but technically Jimmy only needs uh, seven squares. So uh, between the 10 and the 14, which isn't too hard. If his, if this uh, Chaos Coach's screening is shit, and it's ordering shit, like I say, if I was a one in nine dodge, there's a giant hole on the right there. Uh, Jim just walks up and makes a full team cage as best he can, and walks into the end zone with no dice. Absolutely doesn't want GFI, so absolutely will want seven squares. Similarly, we can look at the left, and so look at the ball carrier's diagonal movement, and say, right, where can he get to that requires very little dice? At the moment, it's on the right. And so I'm pretty sure there'll be a blitz on the furthest beastman on the right, and then a full cage uh, on the right-hand side of the field. Every single man on the team. This means that uh, a lot of the chaos become irrelevant. Well, not a lot. The one lodge guard chaos warrior. And I didn't quite get the seven squares, so he's currently a double fire away. I mean, it's fine. Doesn't doesn't need to be uh, too crazy. But these remaining guys that won't really interact, like the dirty player SD. And uh, the warrior, I'd be looking to type people that could get relevant. But at the same time, you don't really want to be basing the mighty blow. I would be content in giving bad blocks here. So, for example, number four, no, got from the left hand side. I'd even tag uh, tag guard just so that that guy's making a block and not moving four squares to get in front of you. Because at the moment, with no one tied up, even chaos warriors they actually move five. Uh, unlike the warriors. <laughs> move four. You know, it can get in the way and can be a nuisance, and it won't be too hard to get a full health screen. 
which will leave Jimmy the two dice blitz into into dodgy shit without a reroll. Yeah, full off screen. Oh, what do you mean, Pat Georgia? I've been to Australia. Whale oil beef hooked. Whale oil beef hooked. Whale oil beef hooked. Whale oil beef hooked. I went to Greg's and got some got some bangers and marsh. It's not even a good team, to be honest, overlording. However, oh man. Glance away and look at chat. Glance back, and this the screen doesn't seem like an actual screen. Oh boy! Wow! It looks like it's a uh, fifty-five percent two dice block on the two heads, and he could this turn double GFI. He doesn't want to though, and it looks like this guy might even overcommit to the screen. It really depends on what this uh, Claw Mighty Blow Jump Up Warrior is going to do. If he full retards it, Jimmy will just cut back to the left. A single blitz on the Blodge Guard, and he moves seven squares to the left and is unmolested. Wow, tough decision here, and that he's been given that he just shouldn't be given for no reason. So he can go either way. I kind of favor going to the left myself with the extra turn. You only need to get the ball two squares forward to avoid the GFI. And there could be the, like a fairly reasonable strain. Leaving base contact with the Mighty Blood Claw just to have men tied up is the one. Five move Bora can be relevant. You know, I think there's a pretty good chance Jim scores here. What you mean? I'm from Scotland. Everyone knows it. Uh, you know, just uh, north of Glasgow. I was uh, out on the boat in old London town, and I went back home. Got myself some some cults from the shop. Yeah, so Borak does uh, Borak would have to GFI really. Oh baby, yeah, so a little bit vulnerable in this current position in that Borak would need to GFI. Oh wow, that's brave. And I think this last pesticle just comes around the back behind the dirty player that's tagged by the Mighty Blow Claw. That will prevent any shenanigans from behind, as well as likely have that pesticle open to provide an assist. In, in situations like this, you really want to not only have the ball safe, but have, like almost guarantee people being open. So yeah, Jim's put it in the exact spot I would have. Not directly behind, so when he's blocked, he doesn't follow up and tag him but so that he's creating a screen while also being in the vicinity to react to uh, a player. So it's likely guard comes across and a blitz comes on the Mighty Blow Claw and then the full strength guy screens out Borak. And then the... Even the guard guy. Yeah, no, guard, guard warrior comes along and the blitz happens on the Claw Mighty Blow. And then... The screen gets filled. He absolutely has to have one on the left of Borak and one behind that guy on the left of Borak. Uh, or Jim just walks around. Seven move ball carrier. Oh wow, this guy. He seems to be shitting the bed. With one turn left, he's got his um, movement six, seven? Movement seven, agi four, um, lock tackle, short hands, beastman, in an absolutely irrelevant position that will absolutely do nothing for no reason at all. Unbelievable.
Tails coach shit in the bed. Yeah, they have the drug Sam is what I've always sounded like. You know what I read? Fucking Voodoo Mike on the forums. And Dirt. And TV Plus. You wouldn't believe it. Yeah, it's crazy. Horak 2 die. Uh, either of Mendati. We were talking about the open pestigal. Open pestigal on a Borak success. I mean, it does have to GFI. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have to GFI. Smacks the guard die. And then uh, best for Gores. Mosey's on him. I mean, it adds, a, it adds a couple of blocks to the sequence. Oh, and with the success, a dodge. But still look 3 plus to score in this position. I'm sure he's happy with it. To have equalized your opponent's drive uh, down 500 TV. I am Sam. I am. Sam, I am. It's more that he really wants to pay attention, and some people distract him in chat. And if he can put all his focus into the game, uh, we'll play better. And you know, it's done flawlessly on this offense. Admittedly, the, the Chaos coach has completely lost his mind and has just done like near the worst play possible. Outside of, I don't know, just ending his turn. Cool. Um, yeah, two die three plus. Oh, he's actually going to avoid the dodge completely and just blitz away and then make the single GFI and not even blitz the non screen, which is, of course, the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Oh, easy game. Absolutely. He could have done so much more than that. One of the worst defenses I've seen <laughs> all week. Right, so ball in the hand, 11 on 11. And uh, just needs to, well, I think he'd want to score and take the win. And based on the, uh, your opponent's defense, when your opponent's defense is absolute trash and their offense is, you know, just a, a crazy early push that you perhaps weren't expecting. Oh, free blocks as well. No frenzy to surf. Feels bad, man. As long as you don't get banged on by uh, by dice, I think Jim has this game. Uh, more with orbits. I have not looked. I, I don't know Jimmy's win rate with this team. But uh, I saw, we were playing GTA yesterday and doing missions and doing dumb shit. And I said, hey, look, I've got a 5-0 Dark Elf team. If I just played four games a day, uh, just super casually, uh, I have a Mighty Glow Blitzer, and I've got a Blodge Witch and a Blodge Blitzer and a Tackle Blitzer. That's all I really need to beat middling coal coaches. If I happen to get the middling coal coaches, I could, I could make an effort. And uh, <laughs> and Jim said that inspired him to try the same sort of thing. Oh yeah, no, no, we're, we're not we're not criticizing the coach. We're criticizing his decisions. You know, people play blood bowl and look for different things. So some people really like the randomness and they think, oh. You know, I know that this pass is bad, but I'm just going to do it 
or uh, what did Lupak do the other day? That he uh, did it for the entertainment value rather than the rather than it being optimal. Like there's there's plenty of ways and rationales behind every single action, but people like Jim and myself, we like you know optimal blood bowl. What is the best play? What has the lowest failure state? Uh, what what is the most likely action we can take that has the least undesirable consequence and so that's what we look for when making assessments it's not not this guy's fault for making a poor screen we don't think less of him as a person but for those that are looking for you know the rationale behind decisions as to what to do to try and win every single game that you play uh not making a screen like that that's the sort of stuff i try to point out it's not to bang on him and make him feel bad it's just to point out what he should have done or what he did that was bad and why it's bad and bad being in relation to optimal blood bowl and not bad in relation to what people want to do so they can do it. if that makes sense Right, so after seeing a questionable defense from the uh, the Chaos in 4, uh, just avoiding base contact seems to be fine. You know you'll be taking the Mighty Blow Claw hit from number 1 Chaos Warrior. Or oh, maybe not. Not Blitzing with Claw Mighty Blow for the first action of the turn. So, we're going to point out that Blitzing with Claw and Mighty Blow for the for your Blitz is what you should be trying to do. Because uh, it has a reasonable removal rate, and being up a man in the final drive of the game is, or likely final drive, uh, is likely to have you win it. There's no reason not hitting this dirty player, so with with no mighty blow, not the correct player. Oh, chat. <laughs> yeah, no, look, everyone on the internet is going to go and uh, take things to extremes. No one, it's like when someone says, oh, go kill yourself. You know, it's not It's not an actual death threat. It's nothing to really be worked up about. I don't know. It's, it's different for different people. Like, I, I think it would be crazy for kids that, you know, were born in the 2000s who are now, you know, approaching adulthood and the internet's been part of their lives for their entire lives. Like, how warped that would be for them to to think that, you know, conversation on the internet are uh, anything other than novelty. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just too old. Maybe I am really an old man. But I never take that seriously. Like a toy, like a Nintendo. Remember when you were a kid and you were playing Alex, Alex Kidd in Miracle World? And uh, you got to the final level and your Mega Drive didn't save? And then your mum said, oh, you have to go and get dinner? And you'd be like, but mom, I'm on the final level. And she'd be like, no, you turn it off now. And you realize it was all just a game, you didn't really care. And you're like, oh, okay. Uh, I think it is the first game of the day in Bedro Draft. Should be doing alright though, We're doing a uh, Mighty Blow Claw Blitz. This is something I've noticed a lot from Jim, especially in our uh, intro to Blood Bowl tutorial using the box teams, is the marking of down men. Has its strengths in when you're playing for the stall, the two down fellas, the Chaos Warrior and the Beastman, uh, only really stand up. They're not really going anywhere else. Look, the two heads guy could dodge out, and it might. Um, but it is for the most part otherwise uh, restricting their movement and restricting people's movement usually as the farm is advantageous 
but still controlling where these people are is good. Similarly, the Choxbirds has left his strength guard, his movement seven, edgy form, short hands tackle, well into the backfield. So essentially for the last two turns, he's been down two men. Uh, for Jim, though, the send-off has him down the drive. I think on the final drive of the turn, like maybe it wasn't worth it. But it was a dirty player. I mean, there's, you know, there's always a risk with the foul. And taking out a Blodge Beastman would be nice. But down a man really does hurt. And he's now in quite a bit of base contact. The poor Mighty Blow is free, but, you know, Movement 7 could come along and blitz a hole and pretend to be a menace. Uh, Chaos have enough guard that they're able to block down this line reasonably well. Is blitzing with Claw and Mighty Blow this time. With the guard coming across to stand uh, based in Borak, gives the uh, Chaos Warrior shoot on the Nurgle Warrior and then the Chaos Warrior shoot on Borak. And then Jim down a man with potentially four or five men on the ground. That's, that's, that's the sort of time where you're looking at it and you're saying, all right, it's now turn 11 and. I can barely scream, and you start to get a little bit worried. So the foul's going to be really costly. And like I said, yeah, with, with so few men that he's really able to move, um, threatening the ball's a really good idea. Oh, it's just New Orleans. I was just putting on my Australian accent for for the game. Oh, I mean, VIP Ori Lenses. Who knows, Mins? I haven't, I haven't looked at the stats. Oh man, you know he wanted the Kaz there. If the Pom steps up to assist the uh, the warrior, oh, steps back. Oh boy! I mean, Borak can tie up a ton, but I think I'd rather have Borak on my cage corner, just because he's slightly faster than a warrior uh, with his movement five, so he'll be able to react. Then the carrier a little better. A random KO evens the evens the field for the drive. Now both coaches at ten. And Borax free. Threatened man marked off by a warrior. Don't really know Borak. Borak in to fix the front screen. And gets the down. Happy days. Not following the rod is good, it lets it react to things, to show the movement uh, Agi is going to come across. And final action, dodge, just to have a foot and another pesky a little more relevant. Feels it's worth re-rolling. Oh, maximum punished. Took the re-roll and stunned. But yeah, look, dodging that away I thought is fine, as the fellow was already tied up by a warrior. Another man would have to be committed already to get a 2-die block on it. Guard would come in to get the 2-die block anyway, and then free dodge. Uh, so I did like the dodge out at the end, but you know, final actions, I really don't like to re roll final actions. And the ball isn't really, uh, I guess it kind of, maybe just still, uh, but not really. 
on a pow, Jim could be in trouble. So it'd be the standing noble warrior gets an assist with guard, uh, bangs down the warrior. Uh, I remember both warriors. Bangs down the standing warrior, and then the lion gets banged down, and then the uh, the blitz comes across. It could even be a two dice if he pays attention and gets the down results. Or even four strength guy could have a path cleared for him. Bit of a hike. Oh, you missed me Scottish accent. Combo bunny. I did it. It was fantastic. Might grab a weird dram of proper whiskey. Wow, I look away for two seconds and Chaos Coach has decided not to go for the ball. He did seem to get the down result, and this Chaos Warrior has a two. I mean, I guess screening's fine. I mean, it looks like there's going to be a GFI involved, uh, just with the the uh, Ducky for Gore uh, being stunned in a good square, in that it was hard for the force strength to, to get around, and I didn't really, in my mind, plan out all the blocks for powers. But there definitely could have been. There's some crazy, ridiculous sweeping. Well, he's stunned on Duckyville the previous turn, and now Borax on this turn. Progress will be halted. You really don't want to be doing any sort of potato shenanigans with, uh, with so many men out for subsequent turns. <laughs> Thanks, Philly. No, no, that, that was my Scottish. A sneaky double GFI to not mark the ball carrier. Unbelievable. Wow, limited options, so... Uh... Nothing really left field. I guess the warrior could come across and um, bang down the double GFI guy on a GFI. Gross as shit. Two dozen guy guy frees a rotter. So it'll be a single free rotter, the Mighty Blow Claw Blitz. And that's really about it. But it'll but. Excuse me, it'll buy time for Borak to come back. So happy days. And fortunately, with this crazy sweeper, uh, Chaos has been really down a man for the entire drive. Just on their own, own accord. I do like the sweeper bump, but I like to have it relevant. So when Jimmy's all clustered up in a ball, you know that there's not going to be some sort of crazy potato handoff play. Like maybe the, the chaos had planned in the first half. And so the sweep is not really necessary when everyone's cluster. Because there's no potential man that can escape. The, the movement 7 as you fall should absolutely be in line with everyone else. At least to the point where there's some sort of you know, potential possible play and some janky passing shenanigans which should just never exist.
wisely blitzing with Glow Mighty Glow. Uh, Chaos up one for the draw. He just needs to really apply this guard. The screening hasn't been doing too much. Admittedly, yeah, look, Best for Gore is a terror. Having the Sweeper, not a bad idea. But I think he could put a lot of pressure on here with guard. He's got the Lodge number 12 beast mill on the left-hand side. Out on a 1 and 9 to provide an assist for the Sweeper. The Sweeper could be a little bit closer. And he does have his own full strength guard. that can really get in the way. It does seem to be Manzing. And so I think now with the one-man advantage and Borak on the ground only standing up, not a bad idea to tie them all up. Uh, also has some two dies, uh, a two dies still to make that just further boxes Jim in. But he doesn't really have a man advantage if the sweeper is push. Oh, hello, Blackneck. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I wouldn't mess with this for gone. Who, mind you, is uh, due for a level up. I think, uh, do you think he'll go for short hands or maybe extra arms? Who knows? Nobody knows. And cool, yeah, look, final two die, even on a push. Does the job. You know what we haven't seen all match? We haven't seen foul appearance do a thing. It's almost like it's a shit skill that no one would actually ever pick. Uh, with this heavy base contact, uh, Jim can free the bottom warrior. Has a. Uh, well, I guess that's about it. He can free the ball carrier. Oh, it's an immediate best for goal blitz. He's still in base contact. It wasn't a blitz, was it? No, nah, it wasn't a blitz. My bad. Oh. Yeah, so I was going to say, yeah, there's two options. One is the you know, ridiculous sideline, almost potato, uh, which I thought was going to be bad. Oh, one in nine rerolls, final reroll. Just to hit the Mighty Blood 4 guy with his Mighty Blood 4 guy, guess the result. Unbelievable. I wonder if he really needed that Kaz here. I'll really rephrase, really needed that success if it was a greedy roll for damage. It was. It was an absolute damage blitz. And gets the result. If the uh, outside Chaos Warrior that made the first block had got a success, then the reroll to get the success on the Mighty Blow Crawl Blitz would have allowed the two die on the other, other Beastman with a uh, Canton and the Guard. But as it didn't, a bit crazy. Does free a Warrior, I like it. Squarely go that's relevant. He's unskilled. And Jim Real capitalizing confident in his best for gore and screening ability. Well, maybe, maybe not confident is the right word to use, but tell you what, with the Chaos Coach having his sweeper so far back for now five turns, does have the capacity to be a little more vigorous. Um could still be in trouble though in uh four strength guy does a one die for a push applies guard on the ball carrier and then chaos warrior powers ducky for gore and then his ball carrier gets blitzed So even the option for really cheeky stuff, like the sweeper comes in to assist on the guard, or uh, Jim's guard, Nurgle Warrior, 
Uh, number two, Nurgle Warrior then blocks for a push or ideally a pal to put the square adjacent the ball carrier. Applying guard then allows the wrestle to chain Borak up and across. Doesn't really... Well, it, maybe not Borak, maybe even then the ball carrier up and across. And that would give... A double GFI for a warrior. Hit the ball carrier after the four strength beastman blocks for a push. I mean, so there's plenty of options. And I as his chaos coach. Well, that's the other thing too. Like, this is a problem with the open league formats. Is that not everyone has the same criteria when they enter a match. Some people are joining to win every single game, and others are joining just to do whatever they want. Maybe draw. You know, that sort of thing. And I think... I think it would be nice to play in a league where everyone was trying to win every game. Uh, but in a virtual league, that would be nice. Yeah, look, there, there were a ton of options. Oh boy. Oh boy. That, that was not the one. Oh boy. I mean, the blocks have locked, but... And you're looking at thinking and you're saying, right, if I do 1 and 36, and that I, uh, that I then, what, do I immediately lose? And not the one on the zombie, but maybe the two heads on the warrior. Because Borak bangs a guy, and, so I'll rephrase, the warrior that would have rubbed the skull rolled into him, bangs the guy, and then Borak, the ball carry, the mighty blow pom, uh, are free to move downfield, and then screen off the ball carrier from the sweeper. <laughs> oh man, double sweeper. This is going to be a bigger hole for Jimmy to walk through, and then cage through. Oh, Blackneck, I, I just have a, I have a bit of a cold. You know, I was, uh, I was out in a Lothian, you know, uh, just, just north of Hadron's Wall, near Northumberland, and uh, and I got some new medicine, and uh, <laughs> I ate it, and it changed my accent a little bit. You know, sometimes I might sound like I'm from a different part of Britain. At least you Americans think that I might be from a different part of Britain. Nobody knows. So, so that could be it. You know what I think about TV Plus? It's fucking rubbish. Ah, uh, thanks, Pedro Jack. The posh Aussie accent is the superior Aussie accent. I hate the Bergen Aussie accent so much. I don't know how or why it happened, but at some point in time. My accent has changed just from sheer disgust of the generic Australian Bergen. Oh, crikey, mate. Like, that's just the cool, you know, Crocodile Hunter one. But the annoying one is, uh, I don't know, there's a new new Streamlabs uh, labs or Twitch Alerts, they call them. It. It's, it's really called Streamlabs. Uh, you can now get accents on the donations. And Destiny, my mate Destiny, who I know, uh, has the Australian accent one. And it's the Bergen Australian accent one. Where the woman's like talking like this, and she says things, and it sounds really annoying. And whenever I encounter someone in real life that speaks like that, I, I become visibly disgusted. Oh boy, this is risky. I would 100% make this dodge if I was him. You're not really stopping best for gores any other way you lose the game if you don't just because of this crazy defense Jim has made the right play in that he's made the sweeper somewhat irrelevant in that best for was able to get through uh, barring some dodging chaos warrior he should be able to clear it 
reasonably well. Uh, look, the midfield guard single GFI is to rest the corner. Uh, the two heads, two passes out. And GFI is to rest the corner. So, look, I take that back. It's not actually safe. But I would still think about the Agi 4 making a dodge for Red Die, Red Die Glory. To win the game. I mean, that's, that's what I would do to win the game. If he's content with the draw, and it looks like he is, because um, he's playing defensively to draw and not offensively to score on win, uh, he'll just take away the front of the cage or the front of the half cage and be content with that, I think. There is an edgy for. Oh man, will he make this cheer by? You know he wants to. Yeah, he absolutely wants to. Early in the turn, GFI. Do you know how many times I've, I've snaked a GFI when I've only done one GFI in an entire game? Many times. Oh, I don't know who Rolf, Rolf Harris is. But I watched... Uh, Ronda Rousey fight some other girl, and by fight, I mean she just stood there. Kind of like this guy's sweeper, just stood there and did nothing. Oh man, I think he had to push it down by pushing it uh, horizontally, and he just stands back up and blitzes, and that makes a hole for best for goal. Although it's a it's a good enough effort, TBH. Oh no, that that was not the one. Well, look now he still has to power him. So yeah, look how he pushed down and then stuck the guy directly behind. Jim had no way to blitz without making a four three plus. Um, but by blitzing horizontally and then standing horizontally, this is the blodge guy that blitz this turn, and on a pow. Uh, is a three boss to score. Three boss with a reroll, not too hard, 33% of power. If it's a stumble, it is the four plus three plus still. Similarly, and that's a blitz with the best for balls. There might be a way to maneuver and assume. Uh, with a one die that maybe shouldn't have been made, and assist. No way, really good. I don't think he's going to be able to free Borak or a Chaos Warrior. Uh, so I just think the top three are the ones interacting with the ball. It also could be down Beastman Blitz. No. Could be a double GFI to tag the guard guy. 1d4 a push, then blitz. I mean, it's still the same sort of thing. It's, it's still low percentage 1d's. <gasps> There's the pow! Wasted the pow! Uh, it's me, Jimmy Fantastic. Focus Melbourne Famous. Alright, it's just cancelled, so it could be 1D for the push into Blitz on the number 4 Chaos Warrior that just moved down. And it's not really, it's going to be still or the Wrestle Dodge. And you don't really want to risk the 1, well you just risk the GFI, so maybe you will risk the 1D. And the 1D allows the block to be a push and still score. It means that the 1D can be if the, if the 1Ds are stumbles, he scores. If the 2D on Lodge is a power, he scores. <gasps> Gets the power. 
easy touchdown. So this, this is actually pretty good from Jim. KO is irrelevant. Uh, but yeah, puts on the carrier and it can be a push and he's in. Brilliant play. So the Borak block and the Chaos Warrior block, freeing up the Noble Warrior to cancel the assist, allows for a 1D that allows the ball carrier to score. Oh, I don't know about this one, though. I guess it doesn't matter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, it's a double GFI. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's a double GFI, anyway. Oh, baby, it just runs it in. No pressure. Oh, but it was actually correct to use the downed guy to block. That way he was able to take the both down result. Uh, due to wrestle. So, uh, absolutely the correct play there from Jim. Fantastic blood ball. Damn. Wow, uh, someone just found my ultimate. Jamtoes just found my ultimate Twitch account. Unbelievable. Uh, that's correct, Tommy. Uh, Tomo. Jim is uh, in full concentration mode. Oh, Lord, Jim Abichi. A pack of the Winfield Blues. You've got to make sure they're all in there. If I find out you've taken some of Winfield Blues, I'm going to take you down. Sitting there, minding my own business, and then this dingo came into my camp, took my baby out of its carriage, ran off with it. Never saw that baby again. Yeah, look, now just denying a Chaos two-turn score. Look, does have an Agi option, does have plenty of Lodge options. Two rails in hand, a uh, Chaos passing play, not out of the... Uh... <laughs> not out of the question. Oh, man, look at all his memes. <laughs> oh, shit. Fucking hate this Fatch Minder Productions guy. What a dick. It's this weird kid with a monobrow, and he stole my name, the absolute cunt. Literally furious. Oh man, no riots, happy days. Imagine the old Chaos in 3 wouldn't be hard. Jim going for, I think he calls it the Zero Rat? I don't know, I call it the Diamond Defense. Diamond Defense is weak through the center if you can pal everyone on the LOS. And if the people on the LOS don't have block, it's not. It allows you to blitz one of the corners, in this case it's a choice between Borak and a Rotter. So the blitz will be on Borak, and that'll allow a decent amount of men to get through. The disadvantage to going through the center is that everyone then is able to react to the guys that you get through the center. And as a six move and five move chaos team, far. A gym with the warriors on the outside to prevent, prevent any uh, sneaky shenanigans. And uh, Mighty Blow Core and Best for Goals will be able to take apart any sort of semblance of a cage. So, uh, yeah, man. And with this push, it's not looking too lucky for the Chaos Fella. I mean, it could be a fancy chain with the Chaos Warrior blocking a zombie, and then the Beastman on the right-hand corner uh, chains the Rotter out of the way. But then he's only got an unschooled Beastman and his full-strength guard. They can then get through that hole. So Jim's defensive from Stella. You know, I'm secretly from America. 
down near Wichita and, and you know Austin, Texas. I was thinking about how much uh, President Bush changed my life. He really helped the ranches out in the southeast. And you know what they used to say about Texas, that, that only steers and queers come from Texas. Is he bamming this guy? I can't even see it. Shitty replay? So, uh, replay should let us see, chat. What's he saying? Yeah, absolutely. Random reroll. Well, I mean, what else is he doing? He's got the short hands pickup. Unless he's doing some crazy blitz through, which he's ruined. It's not happening. Not even trying to score, what a sham. Multi-minded. Don't pretend like you don't love it. Wow. Very sunny. Attempts to throw to the ball handler. No attempt to score. None whatsoever. Unbelievable. Absolutely bleeding heavy. Absolutely. Oh man, I wonder if we'll get a post-match interview. Match for goals. We'll be getting piling on at the end of this match. Oh, an extra two SVP. Really cementing that uh, SUV game. Oh boy. Doesn't snake it. Unbelievable. Okay, now that's pretty much it. Nothing else to do. Could move some rotters up to get a block on a uh, on the guy. Screen off the Palmer. Very good. And maybe even just go and wedge Borak in there. Borak's done his job. You don't need him for anything else. And if people are throwing blocks on Borak, they're not throwing blocks on your actual team. So I wouldn't be surprised if Jim wedges Borak in amongst those Chaos Warriors. Or at least uh, on the Beastman on the left-hand side. Just to incentivize assists. Yeah, look, 20 games in four days isn't impossible, but it's tough. <laughs> I, th I think it is. I think it is a pretty good American accent. Just. Y'all know, yo man, I can do a black guy. Yo, get out of the hood, man. Uh, I can't, that's so racist. There must be some fierce chatting going on that we'll never see. Uh, I guess I can watch it on the VOD. <laughs> Muscle what? my bad, mate. My bad. For shizzle, my rizzle. I don't know. Generic club music, everyone should like. That's the reason it's generic club music. Could be boring, could be dull. But it's, it's meant to be popular in that it's scientifically proven that the vibrations of these sound waves are supposed to be pleasant, catchy. UK hard sell for me all the way. 
Yeah, but Jimmy gave me a specific instructions not to say, uh, oh, what were the words he said? Bugger or cunt or something? Because <laughs> they're banned on Big Brother? Don't know why he's watching that. But no, there was a strict no swearing policy, which is a bit weird because he swears all. Uh, he's actually in Germany at the moment. Because we whenever we're playing GTA, we get one servers. And I've picked up uh, various words like choose is goodbye. And, uh, I guess that's really about it. And there's a Scheisenhausen and Arschlock. Stop fucking trying everything! Oh man. Ah, <laughs> uh, heck yeah. Wow, easy game. <laughs> Don't Master be an ass. Master Wolves Reloaded, what a champion. <laughs> about 20 SPP for him this match. Oh, uh, that was brilliant. 9 SPP for Master for Goals, 6 for Best for Goals. Uh, that was 15 brilliant. 15 armor breaks, 1 oh. send off to 6. Fantastic. Oh, 6 in the winning. Hello, oh, Fash. Sorry. God, that was a funny match. Jesus. Oh man, I was really worried Christ. at the start, and then he just shut the bed on the defense. He certainly did, and then complained about luck. Oh my god, it was oh, so funny. Oh, did he? Yeah, he what did, could he possibly yeah. complain about? What could he possibly <laughs> fail? I don't know, so I just so I just started chatting shit after that. It was pretty fun. Oh, man. I, I, I didn't actually get to see the chat. Uh, I was watching were... the replay live. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. for the, up, to the, up to the second commentary. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You're a lovely chap. It was pretty funny, the chatting. Oh, shit. How lame getting normals. Um, That's right, you want to pile on best for goals, didn't you? Oh, on the killer, sorry? Yeah. The, for goals? I think so. That's going to get me more rando wins, isn't it? Like, Absolutely. tackle would save me losing a game. Uh, maybe one game would, would save me losing. One or two games. Um, but piling on might win me some games that would, would have been draws. Two or three. True. It could. And so. you can even just target non non dodge people. I mean, literally, look, look, in, 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 in 18 games, I've only got one loss. And if I had tackled, maybe I would have drawn or won that game. But those six draws, if I had piling on, maybe I would have won three or four of them. So it's hard to say, isn't it? I think I've got to go piling I think it'd be on. crazy if you don't take piling on. Yeah, I've got to go for the power. Got to go for the power play. And he's got to go show hands, hasn't he? No, oh, what about extra arms? There are many people there. <laughs> there are some people that like extra arms on these ones. <laughs> seven, did I roll a seven last time or did I get an extra, did I get a different roll there? Yeah. God, I thought it was bugged. I thought I could just keep rolling until I got, <laughs> until I got <laughs> agility for him. Um, I'd love, I'd, I'd love dodge next, but I, I've got to take sure hands, haven't I? Dodge or agility for. But sure hands is the only choice. Now he's the anti he's the anti war dancer guy, isn't he? Which is pretty good. Protecting against war dancers. But need dodge and then he's Amazing. strength for blood. Sure hands is really good against war dancers. Um I've already got my enhancement. Which actually I think cost me that game because I think there could have still been an, a riot on his turn fifteen, which would just given him one last turn. But didn't matter, did it in the end. Um, I guess I'd go back. I'd, I could keep this 40 TV bloat and buy a wizard next game anyway, couldn't I? But then it might get me matched up against somebody that I don't want to get matched up against. <laughs> What's your current TV? Um, I've, I've done it already. It was 15. 15, 15. Now it's 15, 10. We'll go well, that change a lot, is there? It's not going to be a huge amount of people spinning, I don't think. Oh, will it put you out of fresh team range? That's the other one. Well, that's the thing. I'm fifteen ten. I can yeah. I can play nearly fresh teams at the moment. 
that you want to play fresh teams. Man. You absolutely want to play fresh teams. Yeah. Yeah, I do, but I don't, worth firing, I don't want to go down to 12 players because 13 players let me foul a lot, which is good. Um, oh, dilemmas. Can you solve a fan factor? Yeah, no, I wish so. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you, everybody, then, in chat. Extra harm, get banned from your own stream. <laughs> no, I would read on another go of Vilenic because I've already the third, the third one isn't doing fuck all, is he? He's... He's on zero because this guy blitzes every turn. This guy carries every turn. This guy just hangs around, <laughs> hoping, hoping. Like I even benched him on on defense because I wanted a dirty player on the pitch. So he's gonna. Oh, but only because I had Borak. Normally he'd be playing on defense. So I'm gonna have to feed touchdowns to him if I can, because um, obviously piling on guy is gonna take care of himself from now on. So if I can, I'm gonna hand off to him. But I mean that was a hard game just to fucking win, wasn't it? Had to make GFIs to score both halves. Um, so, I need to... Yeah, but compared to what they could have been. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. If, if, he, had been, if he had been competent, um, <laughs> I would have been absolutely yeah. fucked. <laughs> I mean, I really thought I was going to lose. It was such a bad matchup. Um, yeah, I could sack the third goat. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm just, oh, yeah, I could actually. I could actually sack the third goat. Um... And then maybe play new teams. And then have 12 players as well. But I do want to, I want to have a good team for the for the finals, don't I? And for that, I want a second killer. So I've got to try and... I've just got to try and force star player points on, on Ducky Fagor. Um, but yeah, sacking him would be really good. Bring me down to 14, 30, 12 players. That would be much more TV efficient. Much more TV efficient. But then... Sacking the like eighty k is so much for a beast man, isn't it? For fuck's sake, it's outrageous. He is just a beast man that costs eighty k instead of sixty k, which is which is outrageous. And twelve players should be enough. When end zone was min maxing Nurgle, he just went with two pesticles, a killer and a ball carrier. But I do like the third, just because the team is so slow. Even having the movement six is good. Exactly, that is, Demaster says you do need a team once you qualify. No, you see, this is the thing, Kirk of Death, right? And I said it, I said it about the World Cup, but Lupak didn't, Lupak took it as a, as a personal insult. But what I meant was, if, you, if, if the World Cup worked like this, where there was only one of each race qualifying, you wouldn't want to play Norse just to qualify because you would have no chance of winning it if you qualified with them. Because literally nobody out of 64 coaches chose Norse. So, so if that was the case, there's no point qualifying if you've got no chance of winning, is there? Um, so, like, you know, I wouldn't have really cared if I'd got top 32 of the World Cup if I, because I wouldn't have won, would I? It, like that, if I'd had to use Norse to qualify, and then that forced me into using Norse in the final tournament, thus scuppering my chances completely of winning it. But Lupa kind of took that as a, as an affront. But I wasn't. He, I just didn't. I didn't explain myself very well, and he didn't get in. He just thought I was insulting him, saying. You know, like that he didn't win the World Cup, so it, I would have rather not qualified. But what I meant was, I don't want to fucking qualify for this with Norse and then get fucked in the finals. So it's basically, what's the point of me sacking this Pestigo, qualifying with a shit team, and then having no chance to win? It, you know, I would rather not qualify because qualifying entails playing five games of Blood Bowl for four days in a row, which is which is a big commitment, isn't it? And then if you're going to just not even do anything when you get there, is there any point? Good question, isn't no. it? What do you think, Fash? Um, well, look, here's the thing. Uh, Keiko Death points out in chat, he says, Brett's won, anything can happen. Now, look, that's, that's a grandiose statement, thinking that Ducky's team was a Brett team. It wasn't. It yeah. was a Brett team with two four-strength knights, which is insane, in the hands of a good coach as well. Uh, I don't think there'll be a single person that qualifies that you don't have the capacity to beat. Yes, it'll be harder when they've got a developed team that's strictly better than yours, that is faster than you, more agile than you, stronger than you in every you know, state, but I don't think there's a single match that you would possibly go into that you wouldn't have a shot at winning. Yeah. In that, you know, risk mitigation. You could you could play with a 16 lineman, human lineman, still, you know, beat, beat Ducky's team, you know, one time out of 10. 
Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> and, it's uh, true. Just seeing, you know, risk mitigation, making so plays, taking the risk when you need to. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, it's not the end of the world, but it would be much easier. Yeah, and, and, and if you had the better team for sure. And and Ducky was the best coach. Um, well, Muldrifter was. I, I don't. I don't insult Muldrifter because basically Muldrifter versus Ducky was the final, wasn't it? They were the two people with the biggest yeah, there, there, there were plenty of other good coaches. Like Mins, for example, only made one mistake in in his run, and it was a mistake that uh, cost him <laughs> cost him the tournament. Right. I think uh, he was otherwise pretty flawless. Yeah. Uh, just did a handoff to a catcher on turn sixteen uh, when he didn't need to, when he could have been in scoring range uh, oh, no. and been un- uncontested, and then yeah. got bolted by a gutter runner who moved nine squares and then threw it. And it turned into a giant shit fight just on you know a simple no dice related mistake. Right. Well, I, I wasn't no. I wasn't insulting Minz either. Out of the yeah, coaches yeah, no, exactly. that I saw, sure. out of the coaches that I saw, Ducky was there, there was a lot of bad players that I saw play. Oh, I didn't definitely. see Minz play. So there yeah, was there a lot of bad coaches I think qualified purely because it was qualified by the people who played the most. So while yeah, Muldr- so absolutely. one my point was Muldrus had played the most, didn't he? He played like 110 games, but he was a yeah. good coach with a good team. Whereas yeah. Now, yeah, the field's already just looking at the top four. Well, even top five, you know, you know the field stronger coaching wise. You reckon? Yeah. You don't reckon? Well, yeah, for sure. You know, they, it will be stronger without a doubt, my bad. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that whoever's in the top ten is strictly better than top twenty. It just means they've had an easier run. Yeah, of course, of course. Right. Yeah, the order they could be in any order here. Yeah. Single decent coach. Yeah, I think I think mostly the the order could be. You know, a, like a lot of different. He's a BBC guy. I've played him plenty of times, and he's not a fifteen hour coach. He's reasonable. Yeah. But you know, fifteen and all lizards. Yeah. Should that be above thirty seven two? Who knows? Should definitely be above fourteen and all. <laughs> Should it be above twenty one and two? I don't know. It's because I mean, you can even do that in a day. To be honest, like, even if you lost your next game. Getting 15 wins with a team in, in four days. It's a bit of blood bowl, but it's not impossible. Yeah, yeah, it's that's the thing, but I, just, I, I don't want to do it and then not have a chance to win. That's that's the thing, you know, like I think when you look at how ridiculous Inarian's team is, how ridiculous Junacy's team probably is, Ducky looks team looks like it's at that kind of range where it's, and Notorious News, where it's like it's got, it'll have all the tools it needs, won't it, at 1750? Hmm. 1750 is all you need. You don't need to go up to 2K. Obviously, Nurgle would like to be at 2K. But, um, you know, you don't need to be with with every team, do you? Um, so 1750-ish is about where things get really good. Look, Sid the coach here, Dwarf 21-1. He could, he could win it because the, the, there's going to be double Wood Elves and double Dark Elves in, probably, isn't there? So, you could get a lot of Elves to beat, them, beat the fuck out of them. So... Yeah, it's it's interesting. I, d- I don't want to just qualify with fourteen hundred Nurgle, <laughs> and, then, mm-hmm. and then have to rely like because then I'm three hundred forty down, which is crap because it's a wizard against Skaven, which doesn't do a lot, or it's like Borak, which isn't isn't very, that good, is he? Yeah, I was gonna go. I do want another killer or or a Rackala for Lainic. Definitely, I would like a tackle a tackle guy for sure, which is why I want to keep this guy and skill him up to have. At least wrestle tackle, so at least I can fucking bring down people. I guess he's going to get tackled. Or Mashfagos is going to get tackled pretty soon, isn't he? But I would like a second tackler for sure. Um, I didn't do the outro, did I? Anyway, fuck. No. What, what game is this? What game is game number eighteen? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. <laughs>